Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. We are at 1611 again. Um, brought in a new face with us. This is... I'm Kyle Butler with TrackMan. Been with the company for uh, seven years now. Also a PGA member and uh, here from Fort Worth as well. So what we got going today is we're going to kind of debunk some of the rumors about TrackMan, uh, show some comparisons about it and just kind of help you all uh, understand how the technology works with it and then since we have Kyle with us from TrackMan, he's going to make sure all of our information we're saying is correct. So, uh, Kyle, if you don't mind, uh, obviously a lot of people know what this is, but I don't think they actually know what this is, if that makes any sense. It's they just orange, see it sitting in an orange by. box that sits behind tour pros. Yep, exactly, <laughs> on the range, and they know it's really expensive. No, that's exactly right. As I'm but uh, a, a little bit of uh, this company history that we always like to talk about. TrackMan is actually a Danish-based company based just outside Copenhagen in Denmark there. And the vision started over 15 years ago with our current CEO and co-founder and our current chief technology officer, Frederick, um, to be able to provide data to every single player on a driving range. And we have another product, TrackMan Range, that is that story. But uh, we took a fork in the road about you know 15 years ago and we started at the top with the PGA Tour. The PGA Tour players, the top coaches, the university, and now we're trickling down to facilities like 1611 here and for the everyday Saturday golfers that may not have access to this $19 or $25,000 piece of technology. But what's built inside there? TrackMan 4 is a dual radar system, meaning that there's two radar systems built inside of it, shooting out from the front of it. But there's also a camera on the front of the unit. The main purpose of that camera is actually really important to calibrate to a target line, whether it be indoors here or out on the target range. Why? Because every little degree in golf matters significantly. Sure. We also use that camera for tracking. We call that optically enhanced radar tracking. So not only is it just a radar system, it is also a camera-based system so as you're well. you're jumping best of both worlds with radar and camera things running. Absolutely, and, and that was really a focus for the indoor market. Radar outside, we track the golf ball all the way to the ground. And with the camera, it helps with some of the measurements here where we only have maybe 10 or 12 feet of ball flight. Right. Yeah. All right, Kyle, so uh, we know tour players use this. This is big time for them. What, um, you know, all the data that TrackMan tracks, you can get, I always tell people, you can go as deep into this as one, or you can stay kind of very skim the surface. Right. What are some, uh, kind of some of the main numbers, uses possibly that uh, tour players are looking at when they get into TrackMan when they're doing that? Yeah, so you're absolutely right in the fact that right now over, over 90 of the top 100 best in the world, official golf world ranking, are all TrackMan owners. We don't sponsor anybody. There's no TrackMan hats or bags or caddy towels, whatever it may be. And we're very fortunate from a rep standpoint to be able to, to go to Colonial, go to the Byron Nelson, or you know, just like this week at uh, Harding Park for the PGA Championship and, and work with these best players and coaches. So what are they doing out there? What are they looking at, right? And it really does depend. You know, if they're looking at driver uh, testing and maybe a different shaft or different head, uh, there's some key numbers that they're certainly looking at. One, ball speed. They're not really too concerned about club head speed, right? Mm -hmm. It's really, are they increasing their ball speed? Another number they're looking at, making sure that their launch is still in that appropriate window. Of course, spin rate. Anytime that you're adding loft or doing different uh, you know, shafts and, and trying out different things, making sure their spin stay in the proper range. And of course, apex, which is the total height of the shot, landing angle, and then of course, carry and distance. Now, let's say that uh, Justin Thomas, you know, world number one players out there with his dad, who's his coach, and you know, they're looking at shot shape, and they wanted to try this, uh, you know, slight little draw. Maybe then they're looking at uh, club path, right, mm -hmm. and face angle. Uh, also, where are they hitting it on the club face, which is a new feature that the TrackMan 4 can provide you with, is showing you where on the club face that ball is, is being struck. And then lastly, really dialing in their, their wedges, you know, from 60 yards to 120 right. yards, focusing on ball speed there again, launch angle, but then obviously carry distance. Right. And That's when right. they're outside, we have a feature called normalization that can take out any sort of the wind factor. You know, so at Colonial, the wind's always blown off the left and they might see these little fades. We can actually take out the wind to show that those balls are actually flying sure. relatively straight. Just right. as like a double check almost. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Talk, I know we were talking about uh, what wedge distances and that stuff. Who was it, DJ or whatever, a couple of years ago, I know he put a video out, or y'all put a video out with him that he was talking about that. It was like 100% dialing my wedges. I know exactly how far a ball is going right. with all my different swings, different yardages, different lofts, different everything. He just knows he's got it dialed in 
to within a yard of where it's going. No doubt, and, and DJ is one of those guys that doesn't get too overwhelmed, too analytical with the 30 plus numbers that TrackMan right. is providing. He literally has two numbers pulled up on his big iPad screen. Spinner rate, and then carry. He knows what those means. He may not right. know what attack angle means in club path and face angle, but he knows what his spin rate is and it should be consistent. He knows what his carry should be. And arguably when he bought TrackMan four or five years ago, he really, really dialed in and honed in on his wedge game. And where did it take him? It took him to number one in the world, right? Sure. And he'll, he'll testament to that for sure. There's videos out there that say, you know, I didn't get to where I am without this little orange box. Awesome. Well, cool. So we got those numbers pulled up right there. And then we'll have this stuff on the screen too, as you're looking at it. But um, so then now clearly not every single person that walks in here or uses TrackMan is a tour player. Right. So for the average golfer, um, I know, for example, I've seen in here, I'll come in and somebody will walk into a bay and they'll pull it up. And next thing you know, there's 25 numbers down there. They got spin yeah. axis and curvature and face to path. And they got all these things <laughs> going on. And I'm like, why? What, why, why are you looking at all that? And they're like, well, I mean, that's, I, I just want to see all the numbers, even though they don't know what 95% of those mean. So if there's, call it, I don't know, outside of distance, outside of carry and total distance, um, what would be, would you say, maybe four numbers that are three numbers that somebody should look at or data parameters that they should be kind of checking as an average golfer, amateur golfer? And you said outside of carry and total. But yeah. honestly, like if you were a 10 yeah. to 25 handicap and you do not know how far you hit your golf ball, come into 1611 and have only one number pulled up on the screen, carry. There's a really cool story about a guy in Houston who bought a golf simulator for his home. and. Um, he said, Kyle, how can I use this $50,000 tool to be able to at least allow me to play better golf? And he was about a mid 90s to 100 golfer. And he said, and I said, you know, John, I want you to be able to hit every single club in your bag, write down the average and then go play golf to that number and take out any of the outliers. So if you hit five shots and you hit one a little bit off the toe and it goes 10 yards less, you know, erase that one or delete it from the equation. And he went out and he called me when he was on hole 13 and he was two over par, but he just blew out his back. He actually <laughs> finished the round, he shot 79, a career high or low for him, and uh, he is a testament just because he knew how far he hit his golf ball. Right. So everyone has this misconception of that they hit their seven iron 165 <laughs> or 155, yes. but it, I bet it doesn't actually end in a zero or a five. It could be 148, it could be 152, right. and you should know exactly to the yard how far you truly hit a golf ball. Not your best one, but the average of your groupings, and then take that to the golf course, I bet you'll bring down your handicap well, by three to five strokes. And especially when you're talking about irons versus like driver and even yes. metal wood, so many people use that total number Correct. in an irons. And, and to be honest with you, I can't tell you the last time that I actually hit an iron where I wanted it to run out. I mean, typically you hit an iron, you want it to stop reasonably quickly on a green. Mm -hmm. And so I actually focus on that carry number way more than the total number because with the exception maybe driver. For sure, you know, um, absolutely right. Maybe if you're a, a lower speed player and you hit a lot of hybrids and, and five woods, sure. that sort of stuff, the total makes a little bit more sense. But also keep in mind with TrackMan, when you see the total number on the screen, it's assuming a firm fairway, right. not a green surface. Your seven iron might, may carry 165, but the total may say 181. That's assuming a firm fairway, but if we went out and played Colonial with soft bent grass greens, the ball's gonna stay right around that 165 yeah, right. And that's the number you need to have in your head, that's, not that total. Yeah, that's, you know, you talk about that kind of stuff. That's the deal we talk about with people too, is like, 165 is your carry number. You go out to play golf and probably attest to what that guy was saying. It's like, okay, I know my seven iron carries 165. If I, but it rolls out and see that total at 180, something like that. But I see a creek in front of me that's 162 yards. I'm probably gonna need to take more than a seven iron because I know it will not carry more right. on average. Now I could just happen to rip one or thin one or something and maybe it does carry that. But on average, it's probably gonna put me right in the middle of that creek. I need to take an eight iron or a nine iron lay short or take a five iron and sure. feel confident carrying that. For sure. It's awesome. Carry numbers are, are phenomenal, especially with irons. But if you want to go outside of carry numbers, I mean, there's some other numbers to certainly look at. And honestly, another key one that people often overlook is the consistency numbers in the bottom right hand corner of each of yep. these boxes. So you see the big white numbers if they're up on the screen here. So we're talking about the each of those boxes down there has three numbers in it. Mm -hmm. The big white number in the middle is the, the number, last shot. The last shot you just hit. That's right. Okay. 
your... Then in the bottom left hand corner, you're going to see your average, which again for your carry number, that's a great number to look at. And then in the bottom right hand corner with the plus minus is one standard deviation off of the average. So for example, if we're looking at Aaron's club path here, we see that that last shot was a positive one, meaning it was moving slightly to the right or into out as a right-handed golfer. His average is 0.6 degrees to the right, but his plus minus consistency is 1.2 degree. What you see on tour is that tour players club path, less than 0.5 of a difference. But really what you talk about a lot of instructors nowadays is the close. ability to control the face, which is interesting. Aaron's face angle is actually more consistent than his club path. And again, tour players, they're looking at 0.5 of a degree right. of consistency. An everyday Saturday golfer that may come in here, 90, 95 shooter, you're gonna see probably plus minus three, four degrees on that face angle. Um, if you can just bring that down to two, one and a half, one, I guarantee you're gonna have straighter shots and hit more greens in regulation. And, and something TrackMan does a great job of doing too is they actually produce their tour average numbers. Um, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you happen to be in 1611, they are actually above the backside. So you've got behind us directly is the PGA Tour averages and yeah. then they have the LPGA Tour averages on the other side. And so we'll, we'll link down to those numbers as well yeah. so you can kind of see. TrackMan just started when we got our seventh unit. Right. They started sending these handy dandy little uh, cards in there that have the PGA right. numbers on them. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest though, the PGA Tour numbers are only for people that swing at those speeds. Sure. Or just want to know what the best players in the world are doing. Now again, the average LPGA Tour player club head speed with their driver is about 94. The average male golfer in the United, actually across the world, is 95. So I hate to say it, but right. if you're gonna compare your numbers to somebody's, it should probably be the best lady player in the world. And Oops. that's no offense. I like. I was about to say, who will still probably kick everyone in this room's ass. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> no doubt. So we touched on wedges, DJ's wedges, carry distance, all these things. What, uh, what can we look at and kind of things to think about? You know, obviously we're looking at carry distance, but with wedges, what are we kind of looking at? Yeah, I mean, modern golf is everyone wants to hit it further, right? But again, like, Everyone can improve from 50 or 60 to about 110, 120 yards, right? So when you're in here working on your wedges, whether it be a 60 degree, 54, 52, uh, we pulled up four numbers here on the screen to really focus on. Launch angle is the first one. Uh, to me, that's the first and foremost, that has to be in a, a solid position. Right. And what is that good position where it should be? I'm gonna say between 26 degrees and 32 degrees, no matter which type of wedge you're using, whether it be a 60 or a 52. I will say it's much harder to get a 26 to 32 degree launch angle if you're using a 60 or a 64 degree wedge. And you can see Aaron, his average there in the bottom left of the launch angle, right at 30, right where it needs to be. And Aaron is using his... Yeah, this is a 54 degree for my new bottom wedges. Yeah, of course. So if you can get launch to be in that consistent window, then we can control carry distance. Uh, and you can see here, Aaron's hitting you know, these little half, three quarter wedges. And the spin is a, a great number there, right? And what is a great number for, for spinning with a wedge? Yeah, I mean, it depends on how, how long right. that shot is. But I would say somewhere between 7,500 and really the most you can get is about 12,000, which you gotta have like a brand new golf ball with super sharp wedges to be able to really get that. Sure. But you don't wanna see these variations. Sure. You don't wanna see one spin at 9,000 and then one at 2,500, you'll essentially catch a flyer lie, right? That was pretty close there, right? Um, but then spin back in the fairway. <laughs> really just working on dialing in what is that feel? Maybe, maybe you do a clock system, okay? I feel like my left arm's at nine o'clock or maybe you feel that as three quarter and then understand what that carry distance would be. So again, first and foremost, three swings with each wedge basically. So you can have three distances, a little, you know, a little here, a little here, a little there. Right. That's right. You have three different ones to play with. Absolutely. But the, before you get into those three, have launch angle pulled up as your first number. Right. And you have to be between 26 and 32 degrees. Uh, we actually did a study, uh, top 50 players in the world, uh, strokes gained from 50 to 120 yards and all 50 of those players had their wedges between 26 and 32 degrees. Right. 
Pretty solid number, I guess that's a pretty good player. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the cool thing too, especially when you're working on a wedge game for the amateurs, not necessarily the professionals, and I say this in terms of maybe better amateurs, so I'm gonna say a single digit handicap or below, is you can really see the cause and effect. Uh, when you have these numbers pulled up of, well, when I don't have that spin rate up, what does that do to the carry? What does that do, you know, in, in relationship to launch angle and all those types of things? And that's after you've worked with your instructor. <laughs> um, yeah. You can kind of start to dial in so those better players looking to take it to the next level. This is primarily, there's a reason why they're called the scoring clubs, yeah. you know, and to kind of play with those launch angles, you know, because some guys might get a little more steep and talking about angle of attack when you start entering some of that into the equation as well. Absolutely, and uh, you know one thing about that that whole launch angle thing as well for for players here in Texas is that it's not going to affect the wind isn't going to affect it as much. Right. And just for fun here, Aaron, maybe grab your 60 degree if you have one, or if you have yep. a 62, 64, Close enough. and really open that thing up quite a bit. And I want to see. So you're going to come back to bite me. You know, I want to see if you launch it at <laughs> at uh, above 32 if that spin number actually comes down. A lot yep. of people think the more aloft you have, the more spin you're gonna create, yeah, but it's actually a, more launch. That's it's, all a, you're doing. it's a friction thing. Right. You actually have to have a bunch of friction to be able to create a lot of spin. Yep. So you can see there, right? If you remember some of those earlier wedges with his 54, he was launching it right at 30. We're yep. getting 10, 11,000 RPMs of spin. Mm -hmm. Now he launched it 41 degrees and that spin dropped in half, right? right? So don't think that a 60 degree wedge is gonna spin more than your 54. It's all about friction, sure. having that clean club face, new golf balls, new wedges that these guys can get you hit, hooked up with. Hit that one pretty much inside. <laughs> no big deal. Perfect. <laughs> also eight, uh, eight feet, two inches to the right. So what we got here now, um, something that we see a lot of in here, mm -hmm. um, kind of misconceptions or maybe not misconceptions, but people just um, a little misguided on spin rates with the driver. This is uh, our common golfer that comes in quite a bit mm -hmm. is they get slapped in the face with a number that is not what they see on TV. And then they instantly say, I hit it further than that when I go outside, this is incorrect and Shoot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, of course, we, we all watch the Golf Channel. We read Golf Magazine, Golf Digest, and you, you read these just mass-produced publications about what is a good spin rate. And honestly, the answer really depends, you know? Um, and we'll show you this really cool tool that honestly is Frederick, again, our co-founder and our CTO, his favorite tool within the software, it's called the Optimizer. And again, we'll get back to that in a second. Phenomenal. But uh, with that said, you know, you have to understand like, what does spin actually do? Spin helps create lift, and if you swing a little bit slower, spin actually can help you. And if you're maybe a higher swing, a uh, higher speed player that launches it already high, that's when we're maybe looking into that 2,000, 1,800 RPM range. You know, you watch the World Long Drive Contest, Kyle Berkshire swinging 150 miles an hour with his driver. Like, yeah, he's trying to hit it 400 yards. Of course he's trying to get the spin at 1,800. Yeah. But like nobody that comes in here is swinging 150, maybe outside the Dobbin brothers, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where they need to live. Um, but it's not all about that, that maximizing the distance. Spin actually can help keep the ball in the fairway as well, right? So what is good for Aaron versus what is good for myself, which is what is good for you, right. you know, it really does depend. So when you're in 1611 and, and using uh, this, this tool and the track man and, and the assistance from the professionals here, um, pull up the optimizer, hit, I don't know, three to five really good driver shots and, and understand how this tool works. So what it's saying is it's based on Aaron's club head speed and his attack angle. So you can see here on this last shot, he had 114.7 club head speed with a slightly positive attack angle. So based on that, we'll look up the right hand side on that chart. He could carry his driver just under 300 at 299. He was really close to that. He was at 297, right? So he's pretty, pretty maxed out. I've got the ability is what he's saying. That's right. You can get to 300 and that's a whole nother topic of discussion is what does it take to get a 300 yard carry? Two more distance. protein shakes in the morning. That's right. Come on, Bryson. <laughs> um, so right, he's right where he needs to be with his carry. And then on the total, you can see that that last shot went 315. He could roll out a little bit further, get all the way up to 326. He's losing about 10 or 11 yards there. 
So what's uh, the issue here? You can see his ball speed is a little bit down. Check. Maybe it wasn't the correct um, or, or a solid strike. Maybe a little bit high on the face, a little bit low on the face. But if you look at his launch angle, it's slightly above his range where it needs to be. Ideally, he's living somewhere between eight and a half and ten and a half. He's at 12.2. His spin is right at the max of Aaron's range. And again, my range is gonna be much different than your range. Aaron's range is somewhere between 2300 and about 2900. He's at 3021, causing his apex to be a little bit too high. So what I would say is how can we bring our launch down a little bit? How can we bring our spin down right just a little bit to get inside that blue range? And that's how we're gonna be able to get to 326 yards total. So again, what is the best spin for you? You have a great tool when you're in here. Hit a couple drivers, use the optimizer, and it really does depend on your club head speed and your attack angle. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, I know you see it too with guys you work with, girls you work with, juniors you work with, whatever. They, uh, <laughs> lots of negative attack angles. Especially on driver, it's with crazy. driver, they get lots of negative attack angles, and that's what I tell people, I'm like, if we can get, if you're swinging it at 90 miles an hour, if we can try to get that attack angle from your negative three, negative four to heck a zero, a positive one, you're talking about picking up big yardage right there because we're probably dropping spin rates down and we're just matching up that attack angle with loft and you can start diving into dynamic lofts and all that other stuff. But yeah, that's, that's well, big. And I think one thing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, because I just glanced at the tour average there yeah. on the driver. and. You, when you first started talking about the optimizer and how everything's different for every single person, when you glance at the tour averages on driver, the attack angle is actually negative 1.3 for the tour. But again, those guys, it's a different level. And it is. And, and there's, there's talk about an average, right? An average is a bunch of highs and a bunch of lows, right? right? The best drivers on the PGA Tour, strokes gained, driving, Rory, Justin Thomas, yeah, those yeah. guys actually hit up three to five degrees. Right. Now there's guys out there that hit two, three degrees down on it. And that's what brings that average down into a negative. Right. And I bet, you know, with those numbers changing in the modern sure. age of hitting it far, to hit it further, you have to be able to hit up on it. So again, if you're just a, you know, a mid nineties club head speed uh, kind of person, and you're hitting three, four degrees down on it, you gotta learn how to hit maybe yes. slightly positive, just yeah. get somewhat closer to zero. That's gonna launch a little bit higher. It's actually gonna bring down your spin rate by causing Stay the spin loft to be lower, and you're gonna maximize your distance because of that. And so that's where we go. Yes. That's Here's right. Up. Another great tool that we have on here, something that y'all have come out with, y'all have updated, y'all fixed. Uh, mainly for us, it's been great because with the firmware updates and everything, the lighting stuff has changed. So now, in all four of our regular size bays that we're in right here, we can get impact location on clubs. How in the world does that orange box get a picture of the front of this golf club? You have to hold it like yeah, this. Yeah, I think you hit it like this at <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, of course. It's a great question, right? And you talk about, oh, TrackMan is radar only. And that's where, like, remember, we talked about at the beginning, we're not just a radar company, we're a vision company. So if you could, determine where on the club face the ball is being struck, where's the best place for you to look or see? I would say actually where the screen is looking back at the club face, sure. but it's impossible to put any piece of technology there because it'll be destroyed in just a couple of shots. So where's the second day best place to look? I'd say directly by the line. Right. So we use the camera and we slow it down with a lot of frames per second. We can actually see the toe of the club. We can see the hosel of the club and what our software actually does is draws a circle of where the golf ball is at address. And you have this outline of a circle and it doesn't move, fortunately for us. Yeah. And then the club and we can see the toe and the heel and the top line enters that you know, circle. And then we put you know, the impact location based on that. So it's a combination of both camera technology and that's where we need the lights because if it was right. completely dark in here, not only would the TrackMan camera not see, but we couldn't see. Nope. But then we also use the radar technology to help with that as well. And the reason why, or how I explain that, is that if there was a squirrel on the back side of a tree, us as human beings would not be able to see that squirrel. We can't see through that tree. But the way radar works is it actually wraps around the tree sure. that we can tell that there's an object sitting behind that. So we can tell that there's an object sitting behind that club face, even though the radar can't see it, 
but certainly the yeah. vision can see it. He said squirrel, and I got real nervous. Yeah. We're going to an ADD joke. Squirrel. Right so I'm like, Where's the squ there's a, we got I'm squirrel. paying attention. I'm we sorry. We got squirrels in here? <laughs> no, no. That's awesome, man. Um, that was it's really cool. Um, whenever it was, a couple years ago at the PGA show, we came down and we sat down with y'all and your, uh, who was, who's y'all's radar? Frederick. Right? Frederick, yeah. And he started going into radar maps and all this stuff. Uh, completely cross-eyed. I think I started drooling at one point. I, <laughs> No clue what he was saying for a solid like 15 minutes. I like orange, it's pretty. Yeah, I was like, no, definitely <laughs> the smartest guy in the building. For sure, man's for great. <laughs> you know, but impact location is one of those, you know, that is very important to okay. be, you know, become a better golfer, right? You have to hit it in a, in a nice, consistent, you know. So the orange that we see here on the screen there is your last shot, but you can actually click the grouping of shots as well. I like that. And get a little bit yeah. of a heat map, heat map so you know. Get a, so we uh, can see like Aaron's a little there? bit off the toe, right? <laughs> well, Maybe, I don't know, this is where the instructors come into play. Are you standing too far, too close? Are your hands moving in a different direction? Maybe your lie angles aren't correct. But again, that's where these experts come into play to help you out with that type of heat map. Um, another thing that we see is we're talking about course conditions. So we've got courses from all around the world, all different elevations, all different temperatures, different types of grass, all these kinds of things. Um, I know we can set the, the fairways and the greens kind of change the firmnesses of those things, but something that we cannot change in gameplay is elevation. And I know here in Texas, we're at 700-ish or here so, Fort Worth, around yeah. Fort Worth. Um, and so that's kind of what we see. I know people are coming in and they'll, for example, right here we have uh, PGA National, and that is at zero right there. We're yeah. basically at sea level. so. Golf balls, what what do we tend to see? Yeah, so we're talking virtual golf here, right? Correct. Because in shot analysis, we can actually change the elevation based on where we're at here in, in Fort Worth, or if you're going to play golf in Utah, we're at 7,000 up, we can make those changes. But we, when you're in virtual golf, you're playing to the elevation of that golf course's real elevation. So PJ National, just off the coast in Florida, mm -hmm. zero. St. Andrews, another popular course. Yes. Right off the coast That's in Scotland. Probably the most popular course we have playing. That's here. right. Zero. So when you when you change elevation, uh, you know, 600 feet, you're going to see some differences, some less distance in your driver and your iron. But also make sure that you check the fairway conditions. Right. Uh, the boys here typically have it set at hard fairways and medium greens and 10 stimp on the green uh, on the greens. But if for whatever reason you're soft, because one of the settings got changed, you're gonna see absolutely no roll in the fairway. Yeah. And then your total distance is gonna be much less because of that. Right. So just keep in mind that when you choose a golf course, you're actually going virtually to that, that world or that place and playing at that elevation where you may be at. Um, for example here, PJ National at zero. So that's a good example because even earlier when Aaron was hitting some on the simulator as he knocks it off that palm tree. <laughs> Don't worry about that one, guy. <laughs> um, he was hitting it, what was it? Just uh, Total yardage was just a little over 300. Yeah, like 309, 303. And those, la that last one, um, I was, was it just, it was just shy of, uh, right there we go. Yeah, yeah 290. 290. So that's realistically, that's the elevation yeah, change. About 15 and, yards difference. Right. And then um, we can, jump real quick and see a course that has crazy elevation and we will fast forward through this as it loads we've got this one set up same fairway conditions but now i'm not even going to try to pronounce it but it's in japan uh, and we are at elevation of just under 2,000 feet and certainly a golf course that's maybe hard to find uh here in dallas fort worth with that many trees but yeah. uh yeah we'll see we'll should see more distance because we're at uh 2,000 feet up So, but even on the carry, I mean, it's I mean, it carried what my total distance was. Right. So you carried it just over three off three off seven or two ninety three. Sorry. Yeah. So right here, we got carry of two ninety three, where my total was two ninety at zero uh, elevation. Right. And then that one ran out a little bit. I had lied, tugged it over there, and it's in the rough into a hill. Yeah, so it like stopped that. rolling but, when it went into the rough. But I mean, that would have rolled out probably 315, 320 into the fairway. Yeah. You know, so not a huge difference, but you know, that five to 10 yards that you may be questioning, certainly look at that elevation. And we'll right. be adding more golf courses here in the future that are at 
you know, 5,000, 7,000 feet up. So if you really want to hit it a long way, just be sure to choose those ones when you're here at 1611. Just make you feel really good. Yeah. And then feel bad when you go outside. So I guess that's a good segue mm -hmm. into the number of differences between indoor and outdoors. Yeah. So if you don't mind, um, talk a little bit about what, at least from an indoor perspective, what it's looking at and what it's trying to do. And then we'll go outside for a little bit and then kind of talk about the differences and what the radar is actually doing combined with uh, Aaron hitting a few shots. Yeah, so I'll, ex I'll, I'll explain a little bit, you know, in reverse, um, how TrackMan works outside, right? So outside, TrackMan is tracking the entire flight of the golf ball. So from point A, or wherever you tee it up or have it there on the, on the range, to where it lands downrange. Yes, we're calculating how much balance and roll it may have, but it is tracking it fully from point A all the way to point B. Okay. And there's no doubt that TrackMan is the leader, undisputed leader in, in that game, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where radar comes into a, a great benefit because it's not just a launch monitor. It's not only tracking 18 to 20 inches and then calculating, it is fully tracking the full flight. Indoors, obviously we're hitting a screen 10 to 12 feet in front of us. We can't track the full 300 yard uh, carry that you know we just saw there. We only get to see 10 or 12 feet of it. But we're tracking ball speed, launch angle, spin rate, the same way inside that we do outside. Uh, and those three data parameters, ball speed, spin rate, and launch angle. Ball speed, we have a plus minus accuracy of 0.5 miles per hour. Probably our most accurate number is ball speed. Launch angle, 0.5 of a degree. And that's so small if you actually look at it. And then spin rate, you know, a spin rate accuracy of 15 RPMs when you use the dots. And I know the guys have uh, the dots here mm -hmm. for it, but if you're just casually playing, a spin rate accuracy around 200, 250 RPMs without the dots there, right? So the way that we track those data parameters are the same inside or outside. We're just having to use a calculated guess in an indoor environment. But what a lot of people don't know is that every shot that's hit on TrackMan outside, over 500 million has been hit in the last 15 years, we use that ball flight model from real life and use that to provide or you know build our indoor proprietary ball flight model. So real ball flight outside is what allows us to build an indoor ball flight model that is accurate. So again, we use ball speed, launch angle, spin rate to be able to plug that into a formula and that's what you see here in an indoor right. environment. That's pretty cool because that's, I mean, that just shows that you're constantly developing how yeah, everything's not just changing. the golf because you know you, you come in and you play golf courses and obviously you want to see the big golf courses you want to see more golf courses because like Aaron for instance you've played probably most of these by now mm -hmm. um, and so I know that obviously there's always development of new golf courses but to hear that there's actually development into the algorithm that figures out that projected flight constantly as more balls are hit outside is, is really cool. And that's just a little bit more about the company and who we are I mean right. we have over 250 radar and software engineers sitting back home in Denmark that are constantly making our, our product better. I mean, there is zero complacency. I mean, we're always thinking about innovation, what's next for TrackMan, and, you know, having this, uh, you know, high level thought leadership because we want our product to continue to get better. Sure. And that's why there's software and firmware updates. And yeah. we get it, you know, tracking a golf ball within supreme accuracy indoors is, is not an easy thing, mm -hmm. but it does take, you know, precision on those initial ball flight parameters to be able to provide us with accurate information. Yeah, I mean, I'll give that to the to y'all's company just as a whole, that any issue we've ever had, stuff like that, y'all are always, trying to stay one step ahead of it, or even if it's something that it's in like a beta development or something that we find, y'all jump on it extremely quick and work hard to fix it. I know y'all got, well, y'all got two different teams. You've got like a virtual golf team, you've got a TPS team, that, and they just solely work on those parts that they do their stuff too, and that's, I mean, that's, that's really what's really fun company. about working for this company. It's like every day something new is coming up and we're, again, we're constantly, you know, changing things and, and, and innovating and we could certainly just sit back and say, oh, look, we're the best. We got thousands and, you know, hundreds of thousands of customers across the globe, you know, but honestly, it, it, that pursuit of perfection or that pursuit of allowing customers like 1611 or even your customers to get better at the game, that's what we're doing. That's what's important to us. It's awesome. Well, uh... Let's take it outside and see some stuff too. Because we can do it. go indoors and outdoors. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. All right, so as you can see, we've moved outside. Um, so yeah, a little, little warmer out here, a little brighter. Um, 
conditions are pretty good. We're out here at Whitestone uh, in Benbrook, Texas, so it's about, uh, I don't know, five minutes, from five minutes down the road from us. Good place, good practice facility, great golf course. Um, so we're gonna do a little comparison uh, to show everybody kind of the numbers, the way things compare. People may think that in to out, we may see something different. I've done this before, so I know it's <laughs> extremely close and almost exact. So uh, what we're gonna do comparing wise, we're gonna hit five wedges, five seven irons, five drivers, and then we'll do the same thing inside, same golf ball. And by we, we mean Aaron. Yeah. And just to remind you guys, outside, we're tracking the golf ball from point A, where Aaron's gonna hit his shots here, all the way to point B down range. And one thing that we do measure in an outdoor environment is what's called carry flat. So this range is a little bit downhill. So we're gonna measure the carry number based on where this golf ball crosses the horizon line. Um, Been learning stuff. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Good info. But uh, yes, again, outside, tracking the full flight of the golf ball. And then indoors, as we talked about earlier, there is some calculations involved, but we'll watch those ball speed uh, and those carry numbers to see just how close they yeah. are. And we do have the, uh, like Kyle was talking about, we got the normalizer turned on. So there's a little breeze out here, kind of quartering a little bit, um, kind of down and that's taken out of uh, out of the configuration. That, that factor, wind factor is gone. That's right, we can take out the wind. We can also set to the same altitude yes. that 16 and 11 is, even though it's just down the road, 700 feet with 95 degree temperature. So yep. We're gonna be having an apples to apples to comp comparison. And we'll also bring one of these golf balls back to the facility to make sure that we're using those, even though there are the premium balls at 16 and 11. So, Obviously, as he hit some shots, what? Um, so on this, just like at sixteen eleven, it's a little different, but you have to line this up correctly. So yes. you have to line it up on the line you're hitting, otherwise, it's gonna, the numbers are going to look different, right? No, you're absolutely right. So what we do uh, is use that camera again. Yep. The, the main purpose of that camera is for the precision of our, our target line, right? And we chose just that power line in the background to line that track man up. Uh, if we didn't have that alignment, imagine if we were two yards off. Well, two yards off right. at 150 yards is about four and a half yards right or left of the target line. Right. So if, if we can't tell where the track man is or where, tell the track man where we're aiming, then all the data that we're getting is, is relatively pointless. Right. <laughs> Which sounds good. That's a good one. Ah. So one thing that is different about inside versus outside i mean is the fact that when we're inside we don't have you know bermuda grass or zoysia sure. grass to hit off of right and, and, and what will you notice differently um well the big thing is that you actually notice differences in a little bit of the spin rate uh not so much with like the seven iron and the driver obviously but with the wedges sure uh, when you're hitting down on it creating a divot like you saw aaron it's reducing the friction and a right. lot of his, his spin rates that we may have seen there we're, we're much less than what we may see indoors with the premium golf ball because of the loss of friction. Sure. So that's reality uh, of what's, what's happening. So Aaron, if you had to say, like, what is your average seven iron? What, what would you say that number is? Carry? Carry. On a brand new set of clubs? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call it somewhere around 82, 182. Okay. Something, something like that. Yeah. 30 yards. I'm just kidding. Loud. 05 spin. Same exact spin you were seeing. Oh, is that 4,000? <laughs> that was a little. Yeah, I, had to I, was gonna, I was gonna jump on that one a little bit. That was a little toey. <laughs> oh, was it off the toe? Yeah. That's ah, still 3,900. Bring that Maverick over here. Let's see what we can do with that. <laughs> Nine ball speed, 293 carry. I mean, that's exactly the numbers that were. The spin rates are right in that 3100 range. It's a 28. All right, well, that's going to do it for us at Whitestone yep. um, and outdoors. So, got some numbers on it, which you guys have seen now, but uh, we're going to head back over to 1611 and just wrap up real quick there. Um, we're going to hit one of their range balls to get some numbers comparisons. That way, it's the same thing. Yep. Aaron didn't want to throw a bunch of Pro V's down and hit those under the range forever, but... I don't have that much money. Yeah. Uh, big thanks to Cody and Kevin here at Whitestone for letting us swing by and play with the orange box outdoors. Yeah.
Great guys, y'all come check out Whitestone if you're around the Bembrook area. But let's head back to 16 11. Let's check it out. Um, All right, everybody, we are back inside in the AC. Ooh, feels good. So much better. <laughs> no, uh, no sweating, no bugs. No, no sunscreen. No sunscreen, <laughs> no sweaty hands. Um, I'm gonna run through the same set, five with each one, 54, seven iron driver. Um, we snagged one of the golf balls from Whitestone. Thanks guys. Thanks guys, appreciate that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it'll be a straight apples to apples comparison. Um, everything, altitude, temperature, it's all set the same. So we will uh, we'll rip it and see what we see. These are going. Ball speed average out there was 86. Yeah. yeah. I mean, your carry average is 107 out there. Get that one. 127. Versus an average of 120. That was more like your speed out there. I'm waiting for this golf ball that's to crack. Great. Ball speed average 170 outside. Boom! High tub. Swivel. All right, I uh, successfully have gone through that, and I don't know how I'm sweating in here, but it's, it takes a little bit out of you, I guess. Um, tables are gonna be up down there, y'all can see them. I mean, you're indoors to outdoors, it's pretty much not a noticeable difference. Well, especially when you start to equate that there's a human error margin there yes. as well. I mean, who's Aaron, to say that I hit it the exact same every single time? I 100% will tell you that I did not. Yeah, you're good, you're not hiring by good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> You know, Kyle talked a little bit about friction and different things. The range that I was hitting on out there at Whitestone, a little bit shaggy. Um, so maybe there was some stuff happening there. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of little factors like that that could come into play, but we're really talking about a yard, a half a yard, right? three yards. Right, I mean, uh, as we talked about earlier, our accuracy tolerance is outside our every 100 yards you go, accurate to within a foot. Inside every hundred yards you go, accurate to within a yard. And I think you guys will see that in the tables below. Yeah. The ball speed comparisons, the carry, the total, you know, the spin rate it is all very much uh, a similar experience to what you get outside on the driving range right here indoors at 1611. So if y'all have any questions about TrackMan, please comment below. Uh, myself, Ryan, we'll answer them. And if you really throw us a curveball, we'll defer to <laughs> Kyle and we'll get you a, a very good detailed answer coming directly from the source of TrackMan. That's right, we'll do that. But Kyle, I wanna thank you very much for coming in. Yes. And thank TrackMan for everything that they do for us. It's a, a great company. Again, if you're interested in something like that, some type of launch monitor, something that's super versatile, going indoors to outdoors, the experience, the graphics, the data, it's all, they, they wrap it all into one bundle. So if you need anything like that, feel free to holler at us. Um, at 1611, we can get you set up with a, with a rep in your area and, and get you rolling. But to say, if you're seeing this on my channel, obviously if you don't have their information, you should have their information. Yeah. But if you don't, comment and we'll put you in touch with them. Perfect. Well, thank you all for checking in and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.